Kawasaki have got quite a few bikes in their litre category. There's the almighty H2, which scared the living daylights out of me. There's the ZX10, which is track ready. There's also the 1000 Versus. They've got the Z1000 Naked. And then they've got this, the Z1000 SX. The Kawasaki Z1000 SX was updated in 2014 to look very much like it is today. In 2017, however, they listened to all the riders' complaints about the previous version and they updated where they could. The one thing, however, that they did not change was the engine because nobody complained about the engine. Maybe Bob from SX did, but they told him to go buy a ZX10 instead. The Kawasaki ZX10 is a track-ready surgical tool. This is more of a hand tool for everyday use. Where the ZX10 pushes out almost 200 horsepower, this bike only pushes out about 140 horsepower, but it costs half the price of the ZX10. So with all the listening that Kawasaki did about their bike, let's run through the changes that were made for 2017. So let's start at the front. The front has been restyled to bring it more into line with Kawasaki's design language. It looks a lot more like the ZX10 if you squint your eyes a bit. And then the mirrors have been moved two centimeters further apart. This screen has now got a double bubble design and it has been lengthened by one and a half centimeters. The instrumentation is straight from Kawasaki's parts bin. I've seen that on the 650, I've seen that on the X300 and it looks like the standard for Kawasaki going forward. I do not particularly like the white on black letters because in daylight it's not always that visible but I like the analog ref counter. Then they've widened the bike by about 28 millimeters so the bike is wider to get wind flowing around you easier. This is still the 19 litre tank from the old model but the seat has been lowered and this lower seat and the higher screen makes for comfortable cruising. They've also beefed up the pillion seat, it's a lot more beefier, and they've added these grab handles. Now these grab handles come with attachments for the optional pannier system. But the biggest change to this bike is under the skin. It still maintains Kawasaki's ABS system, it still maintains the traction control, although the traction control is now linked to a far superior IMU, which measures the bike in six angles. This system is also linked to the traction control and the ABS and it's now got cornering ABS which means that if you are in full tilt in a corner and you do need to brake suddenly that this bike will be able to save your bacon. The ABS comes standard and the traction control is adjustable through three levels. There's one and two, two being the most intrusive, one which semi-intrusive and then you can also switch the traction control off. There's also a power mode, you can choose between full power and low power full power being at the full 140 and low depending on the conditions between 75 and 80 percent of the power so you're looking at around 100 horsepower. This bike is labeled a sports tourer but I have ridden this bike now and it tends to lean more towards the sport than it does to touring. The seating position on this bike is very comfortable and quite upright. These handlebars are raised it's not like a super bike where the handlebars are down low. The seat has actually got some padding on it it is nice and wide and apparently this seat with a beefier perch for your pillion will make life for your pillion a lot easier. What I liked about the bike is the lines. It looks aggressive. The other thing is it's got twin exhausts. It hasn't got those huge cans that you get on bikes nowadays that have to conform to EU4 regulations, which this one does. This has been on my radar for quite some time because it is the ideal combination of power and comfort. This is the type of bike that I can easily see myself pulling a Forrest Gump. I would ride that way until the sun sets or I hit the sea, whichever comes first, and I would turn around and I would ride that way and do the same thing. If you are in the market for a sports tour, which this bike clearly is, it needs to be on your shortlist. There are quite a few bikes that compare with this, but at the price that this is coming in, it's going to be a very difficult decision for you to make.